Hi everyone, my name is Celeste. If we haven't met before, I'm the homeschooling mom of three boys. I know that at this time, many of us are wrapping up the end of our homeschool years. If that is the case for you, I pray you are having a wonderful end to your homeschool year. In this video, I wanted to share a look inside the God's Design for the Physical World curriculum by Masterbooks. I talked a bit about this in our mid-year evaluation. I mentioned that this was a new curriculum to us in a way. In the past, we had used the Answers in Genesis version which splits out each of the three books kind of into separate books the master books version combines it all into one book so this is the first time that we use the master books version of it this year we are wrapping up our fourth year of homeschooling and we have an eighth grader a sixth grader and a fourth grader we used this curriculum exclusively with our eighth grader he worked through this really independently what we would do is have him read through the assignments and kind of work on it independently and then once or twice a week I would meet with him go over all of the different lessons of that particular week review the different questions the review questions and things like that so it was a course that he did very independently and that was one thing that we wanted to do as he is preparing to look forward for his high school years our younger two sons used a new curriculum to us which I also shared about I should have looked inside that curriculum recently so I'll be sure to link that video up in a card if you haven't seen it this is one out of the four courses that are available under the gauze design for science series. This is the God's design for the physical world, but there also is God's design for life, God's design for heaven and earth, God's design for chemistry and ecology. So that is the full four set. Each one of the sets is kind of subdivided into three different books, I almost think. I feel like each one of these sections could be taught as a separate course, um, but again, all three do correlate under the same kind of theme, and it just kind of splits out into sub-themes. So this being the physical world, the three sub-themes are machines and motions, heat and energy, and inventions and technology. Curriculum has worked very well for us. It's very open and go with minimal prep. If you're interested in seeing more about it, I'm gonna be flipping the camera around and showing you a look inside. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a look inside the student text as well as the teacher guide. Um, first, we'll take a look at the student textbook. So as I mentioned, this course is made up of three different books or two different sections. We have machines and motions, heat and energy, and then inventions and technology. So when you open up the student text, you see the index. The first section is machines in motion. So unit one is mechanical forces. Unit two is simple machines. Unit three is kinematics. Unit four is dynamics. Unit five is circular and periodic motion. Unit six is use of machines. And then that is the end of this first Machines and Motions unit. At the end of this, there's a final exam and all of that, which I'll go into in a little bit. The second section or the second portion of the course is the heat and energy. So it starts again with unit one and the forms of energy, unit two, which is thermal energy, unit three, which is electricity, unit four is magnetism, Unit five is waves and sounds. Unit six wraps it up um, with the light unit. So that is the end of that portion. The final portion of the course is inventions and technology. And the units in this section are unit one is communications. Unit two is transportation. Unit three is military inventions. Unit four is modern conveniences. Unit five is medical inventions and unit six is entertainment. So in the beginning of each of the gauze design courses, there is this kind of introduction. Um, so this course is designed for third to eighth graders. They have information of how you can tailor it to the different levels of learning. So they suggest that for third to fifth graders, at the end of every lesson, there are different activities. And they suggest that you do the beacon activity, 
um, also the little brain activity, which is what did we learn, and also the rocket activity, which is taking it further. For sixth to eighth graders, they suggest doing all three of those in addition to the challenge section. So this would allow you to read the lesson aloud or read it with all of your students, and then just to have them each do the different activities that you choose, depending on their level of learning and also what you would like to do with each of them. So the first section is machines and motions. And when you open it up, it has an overview of the unit and the different lessons within that unit. So the very first lesson is introduction to mechanical energy. And one of the nice features about this course is that the lessons are very short and concise. So in this particular case, you can see it's just about a page and a half of reading, um, but I feel they do a really nice job. There's a lot of great information that's kind of packed into that short and concise lesson. So here are the activities at the end. Here's a little beacon activity, the what we learned, little brain icon, the taking it for the rocket, and then this is that special section for the older students. Lesson two is potential and kinetic energy laid out in a very similar way. So I'm just gonna flip through and show you a few lessons within this first section of the course. In the course, at different points, you'll notice there are these special features. And it's really nice because they're able to read and learn a little bit more that being a concept that correlates with what they are learning. So you can choose if you'd like to include these special feature readings as well. So coming to the end of this first section of Machines and Motions, we are in lesson 34. And at the end of every single one of these sections, there is a final project that you can choose to have your students do. In this case, it's build your own machine. So here they explain the different um, options for your child's final project if you'd like to have them do it. There also is a final exam that goes at the end. If you do testing, you can also include that as well, which I'll show you that's in the teacher guide but that is the end, and then there's also a conclusion at the very end of every single course, as well as the glossary. So that wraps up the machines and motions portion of the course. Then the next section is heat and energy. So it is laid out in the same exact way as the machines and motions. So what I'm going to do is just kind of flip through and show you a look inside some of these lessons, but again, they are laid out in the same exact way. When you come to the very end of the heat and energy section, you have the final project. So that is this here, lesson 34. It explains it there. And also here is the conclusion lesson for that portion. Okay, we come to the final section, which is inventions and technology. And again, it's laid out in the same way. At the very end, also lesson 34 of this section is also the final project, um, becoming an inventor. So that is that, it explains it there, as well as the conclusion lesson. So that is pretty much a look inside the student text. Now I'm gonna go show you a look inside the teacher guide, which has a lot of the rest of the components of the course. This is one of the differences between the Answers in Genesis version and the Master Books version. So the Answers in Genesis previous version that had the three books separate allowed you to have a free printable download that kind of came with it, a companion guide. So all the information that's in this book was actually a downloadable um, PDF that you could print what you wanted, what you didn't. So there's pros and cons. Um, the nice thing was that you only had to print what you wanted. The nice thing about having it in this format, it's already printed for you. So this includes weekly lesson schedules, student worksheets, quizzes and final exams, and your teacher answer key. So pretty much this is all you would need in order to supplement the course. You open it up. It does say that there is permission to copy within your home, which is very nice. Here is a table of contents. Again, there's gonna be a daily suggested schedule, which we'll look at. And then you have the worksheets. Any of the lessons also have worksheets that they'll have like in those little brain sections or the rocket sections, they'll say use this worksheet. So those worksheets are all found in here. 
Also, there are the quizzes and the exams. There is a quiz at the end of every single unit, as well as a final exam at the end of each one of the sections. And um, there's also then an answer key for you. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so here is the suggested daily schedule that they have. So they have it broken up by week. So this is a schedule that is a 36 week schedule and it allows for science four days a week with the fifth day off. So if you do four days a week for 36 weeks, you should be able to complete this course in one school year. You can decide if you'd like to do a different schedule, um, if you'd like to do science three days a week or if you wanna do all five days a week, you can decide. Also, if you'd like to take some of this Again, these are in a way three separate books that you could decide to separate out and just do this and supplement with other materials or just do heat and energy and supplement with other materials. So you can decide whether you'd like to do all three sections or just pick and choose because they are laid out almost like three different books. So here we have the suggested schedule the entire year. So this is very nice. You can see if it works for you. It's nice because you don't have to kind of create the schedule. You can just follow this or you can decide to make your own schedule depending on your specific homeschool schedule and what you'd like to do. The next section are the worksheets. So they have the worksheets separated by book or by section. So they have the machine in motion worksheets. So with this section here, you have two options. If you are just gonna use this course as a one time, you can actually rip out all of these worksheets and just give them to your student and they can keep it in a three ring binder. However, if you would like to make copies to use with other students or use with future children, then you can photocopy this other children later on. So here is lesson one. Here's an example of day one, unit one, lesson one. So here they have the supply list and then these are the sections that are in the book. So I'm actually gonna show you so you can see kind of how it is in the student book. So you can see how it kind of works together. So if you see here, here they have the physical laws, write your observations. So that correlates with this section, physical laws. So when your student reads and does this activity, then they would write here. So what did we learn here? That correlates with here. So they are the same exact questions. This just provides some space for your student to answer the questions. Also taking it further correlates with this section just lays it out for them so they're able to answer the questions. So again, you can choose to rip these out or make photocopies and have them use these, or you could even have them just keep a notebook. So for these kind of review sections, we chose to just have our son keep a notebook and write out the questions, but you can choose what works for you. The back worksheet for lesson one. So this is the beacon activity. So that correlates with this. So again, when you see this, it says the activities described on the types of motion worksheet this is the worksheet that they are referencing. So you can choose, like I said, to rip this out or to copy it for your students. The same thing for lesson two, and then the worksheet on the back. So that is pretty much the layout um, for each of the days. It's laid out very nicely. It's very open and go, does not require a lot of, of prep work. So you can just read the lesson with your child the questions and the worksheets. You can choose whether you'd like your child to do them written out. If you're doing this with several of your children, kind of more in a group activity, then you also can decide if you'd like to have, kind of do it more verbally or orally. I kind of rotated between the two, so there were times that I had my son write out the questions and answers. There were other times that we did it kind of more like a discussion, answer the questions, so. That is pretty much how it is laid out. Again, then it goes into the next section, which has the worksheets for heat and energy. And again, this is all laid out in the same way. After the worksheets, you have a section that has all of the quizzes and the final exams for each of the sections. So these are the quizzes and exams for machines in motion. So at the end of every single unit, there is a quiz that you can choose to have your child take. The quiz is just one page, but there also is the option for a challenge questions in the back that you can choose to use kind of as extra credit or bonus or to include it within the quiz, you can decide. But there is that option. At the end of every book or every section, there is a final exam that you can choose to have your child take. And again, it's the same for the other two sections of the book. 
The final section is your answer key. So previous to this section, the rest of this could all be ripped out and given to your student, or you could make copies. But this is a section that you will want to keep as a teacher because it has all of your answer keys for the course. So the first section of answers is for the worksheet. So here it goes lesson by lesson and has all of the answers that you will need for each one of the sections, the taking it further sections, the what did we learn sections, so the worksheets, the challenge sections, all of your answers are right here in this portion. After that, you have all of the answer keys for the quizzes, for all of the quizzes that we will use within the course, so all of that is there for you for each of the three sections of the course. And then the final section is the answer key for the final exams. So there are three final exams. There's the machine in motion exam, the heat and energy exam, and the inventions and technology exam. Very end is just the appendices that you can use that has the master supply list, a couple more resources that you can use in the back very end it kind of just gives an idea of how long you can expect to spend on each lesson the schedule and a few or more tips regarding using this course okay so that is a look inside the masterbooks version of the god's design for the physical world if you have a science curriculum that's worked really well for your family please be sure to leave it in the comments below i know this is the time of year that many families are researching different curriculum options what to use for the upcoming school year i pray this video is of help to you kind of on your research as you continue your home homeschooling journey. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I know many of us are wrapping up the end of our homeschool year. We are actually getting ready to almost wrap up our year here in a very blessed year. At the end of the last homeschool year, I share some tips of how we as a family try to finish the homeschool year strong and things that have worked for us in that endeavor. So I'll be sure to link that video in case you'd like to check it out. I pray that you and your family are well. I pray you are blessed. I thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.